Hi, Dr. Dave here with Small Gap Combinations, where cut-induced throw is very important. First, I'll cover the physics effects, then we'll look at game situation examples, where understanding these effects can help you make shots and win games. Here are a collection of shots I have set up for demonstrations of important effects. The 8 and 9 are frozen, the 10 and 11 are about 1 16th of an inch apart, the 12 and 13 are about 3 eighths of an inch apart, and the 14 and 15 are almost 1 inch apart. Let's start with the frozen 8 and 9. A direct hit sends the 9 straight up table. The 9 can be pocketed, but it must be thrown to the left by hitting the 8 to the left. At a small angle like this, shot speed has no effect on the amount of throw. At close to a half ball hit, where the center of the 8 is aimed at the edge of the 9, with slow speed, the amount of throw is maximum. Throw is largest with a stun shot, where the first ball slides without top or bottom spin into the second ball. Stun is guaranteed for this shot and all of the small gap combos in this video, since the first ball doesn't have distance or time to develop forward roll before hitting the second ball. Here's the shot again. Look at how much it throws. Maximum throw with typical ball conditions is about one inch per foot of travel. At cut angles above about 20 degrees, throw is less at faster speed. Now let's look at how throw changes with cut angle. Again, throw is maximum at close to a half ball hit. Notice how throw is less, but still fairly big, at larger cut angles. Now let's look at the 10 and 11 that are about a sixteenth of an inch apart. When balls are nearly frozen like this, the second ball reacts much like as with the frozen ball case. Here's the straight hit. Again, throw is maximum for about a half ball hit with soft speed. And throw is less at faster speeds. Now let's look at the 12 and 13 that are about 3 eighths of an inch apart. Here's the straight hit. The gap between the balls allows the 12 to cut the 13 at an angle, but throw will be in the opposite direction. With a gap size of about 3 eighths of an inch, throw cancels the cut very closely over a wide range of angles, especially at slower speeds. This might seem like magic, but it works. Notice how the 13 heads very close to the straight hit line for the next few shots at different angles. Beyond about a half ball hit, the cut effect becomes larger than the throw effect, and the 13 now heads in the cut direction. Obviously, these same effects also apply in the opposite direction. Again, when the gap size is about 3 eighths of an inch, the angle you hit the first ball matters very little for angles less than about a half ball hit. Now let's look at the 14 and 15 that are almost 1 inch apart. Here's the straight hit. Even at a small angle and slow speed, the cut effect is larger than the throw effect, and the 15 goes in the cut direction. At bigger angles, the 15 can be cut a large amount.
Now let's look at several game situation examples where an understanding of combo throw effects can help you make shots and win games. Here, the 14 and 15 are frozen, and the line of centers heads well to the left of the corner pocket. However, by hitting the 14 to the right, we can throw the 15 into the pocket. Here, we only need about a half of maximum throw, so I'm hitting the 14 into the 15 with about a three-quarter ball hit, twice as full as a half ball hit. The out is easy from here. Here, the line of centers heads closer to the pocket, but I still need to throw the ball in. It is easy to throw a combo like this too much. For example, if I hit the 14 too thin, trying to roll the cue ball forward for a look at the 12 in the side next, I might throw the ball too much. A better option here is to hit the 14 fuller and not throw the 15 as much, and follow forward for a look at the 12. Again, I have an easy out from here. In this example, there is about a 3 8 inch gap between the 14 and 15, and the line of centers heads into the heart of the side pocket. As we saw earlier, because of this gap size, I can hit the 14 over a wide range of angles and still pocket the 15. The right play here is to hit a little on the right side of the 14 with stun or slight draw to get position on the 12 down table. I could have used slightly less draw on that, but I still have the easy win. Here, I need to break out the 13-14 cluster to get the win, and the gap between the 12 and 15 is again at the almost magical 3 eighths of an inch. The natural angle here heads in a good direction, so if I hit the left side of the 12 with follow, I can pocket the 15 and get the breakout. I should be out from here. Here's another example with a 3 eighths inch gap between the 10 and 11. As we saw earlier, the 11 cannot be thrown toward the corner. Here, the best option is a lockup safety, like this. I'm a favorite to win from here. In this example, the 11 and 10 are frozen, and the line of centers head straight to the pocket, so I need to make sure I do not throw the 10 offline. I just need to make sure I hit the 11 straight into the 10. With a good hit, the 11 won't move very much, and I should have good position for the win. Here's a very similar example. If I didn't understand throw effects, I might think this combo can't be missed, since the line of centers heads to the heart of the pocket. However, I would be wrong. For example, if I were to hit the 10 square with slight draw to hold for the 12 next, I'll throw the 11 well to the left of the pocket. That would be a bad mistake since I just sold out the game with an open look at the 8. Luckily, I understand throw effects enough to not let this sort of thing happen. In this example, there is about a 1 inch gap between the 11 and 13, so I can easily cut the 13 into the corner, even though the line of centers heads well to the right of the pocket. But I need to aim the shot very differently than a non-combo cut. If I aimed to cut the 13 into the heart of the pocket, not adjusting for throw, I can miss the shot badly, since the 11 will throw the 13 toward the rail. To pocket the shot, I need to aim to overcut the ball. If I plan to use fairly slow speed to hold the cue ball for the 11 in the side next, I need to compensate for throw quite a bit, since throw is maximum for a slow, half-ball hit shot with stun. I will aim the 13 here, well to the left of the pocket, knowing it will throw to the right about 1 inch per foot of travel. Here's the required line of aim on the 11 to overcut the 13. And here's the shot. That worked, but a better approach here might be to use more speed to send the cue ball off three rails to get position on the 11 in the opposite side. With more speed, I don't need to compensate for throw as much, and I won't need to cut the 11 as thinly, both of which make the shot a little easier. Here's the required line of aim for the 13 to compensate for the smaller throw. 
And here's the required line of aim for the 11. Here's the shot. I should easily win from here. I hope this video helps you better understand throw effects applied to small gap combos so you can make shots like these and win more games. Here's a quick summary of the important effects to remember. Maximum throw is about one inch per foot of travel and occurs at slow speed close to a half ball hit. At cut angles greater than about 20 degrees, faster speed results in less throw. With small gap combos, the throw effect is larger than the cut effect at small angles. When the gap size is about 3 eighths of an inch, the shot can be hit over a fairly wide range of angles and speeds with the second ball still heading straight. Be sure to practice these types of shots. For more information and resources dealing with throw and aiming combinations, see the links in the video description below.